Okay, so welcome to fish number two here, everybody. And let's go ahead and get started. So what we need to go ahead and do is we're just going to run the same process that we did for our first fish. We need to definitely load in here our base fish geometry. So we'll just go ahead and double click that, load it in. And we'll go ahead and hit T here so that we're going to be um, at least in edit mode here. And you can see that we have our you know original base mesh but um, we need to definitely go ahead and manipulate this into the shape that we want um, and to do that we got to bring in our image that we're going to be using for our fish too okay so I'm just going to go over here and make sure that I jump into our texture window here and you can just do this at the top um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on the side here okay so let's just go into our folder here and it just takes a second to load our image Okay, so we'll go ahead and bring in our grouper image here. Now, this definitely isn't a um, cartoon style fish, but we need to go ahead and make sure that we're, you know, at least going to uh, bring this in as a cartoon fish or make it a cartoon fish. Okay, so I'm just turning on the um, opacity there. I'm going to make sure that I go ahead and save this spotlight so that we have uh, the spotlight of this and we can just simply reload it much faster here so I'm just going to go into my Pixelogic folder, our project folder, our Tuts Plus uh, Fish 2, we'll call this um, Grouper Spotlight Okay, go ahead and save that I'm going to go ahead and minimize there I'm also going to go ahead here and change the material to that gray just making sure that I have that mirror symmetry on here Okay, we just need to go ahead and manipulate here um, into the fish to shape and to do that there's a couple ways that we can go ahead and do this um, we can simply mask out use the move skill and rotate um, as needed but uh, I tend to like to use the move topological because it just seems to be you know a much faster solution so we'll just go ahead here and start manipulating the shape into what we need and this this will just take a, a couple minutes to go ahead and get this shape basically manipulated into the way that we want here okay and we can always you know if you want to come into our geometry tab turn off our dynamesh uh, and Z remesh it which might actually be faster to to go ahead and manipulate so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this tick through real quick I'm not gonna worry about um, pausing the video here for for the most part. I'll just let it go ahead and kick through so you guys can see the entire process here. You can definitely see where the underlying image here, where we going to have at least a little bit more of a um, complex fish to go ahead and create. So let's go ahead and take a look at our geometry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half one more time. Okay, so at this level we're okay. Let's go ahead and turn our polyframe off here just making sure that we still have our mirrored on okay so we'll just go in here and manipulate our shape real quick go ahead and turn my smooth down because I'm going to smooth this out um, just so I definitely get a you know a really solid base mesh here okay so we'll go ahead and clean that up go ahead and just move topological real quick and you can see we're, you know, using this move topological brush, we definitely get a um, real easy method to go ahead and shape our fish. If you want, you can always jump up a subdivision level. Um, it doesn't really matter for the most part right now, simply because our main goal is just to get the um, fish base mesh for this number two fish in um, kind of quick. And if you want to go ahead and sort of run through it um, in a quick way, you can go ahead and do that. Um, just make sure, like I said, to, to really give yourself a solid base mesh to, you know, start creating from. So we just need to, you know, refine that fin a little bit more. Okay. So we have a, a decent shape here. None of this stuff should really, you know, be that um, hard in terms of your time. 
if you use your move topological brush and, and you know use the methods that I'm using you should really be able to get this done uh, at least fairly quickly so I'll go ahead and delete the subdivision levels here go into our Dynamesh make sure I turn on our Dynamesh here okay and you can see that it's updated you can always turn that blur on uh, even turn the the resolution down a little bit lower and just Dynamesh it so that it's you know definitely a Dynamesh model here okay so we'll go ahead and turn our polyframe off and we'll come in here and just start masking out you know at least where we're going to need the the mask to pull out our fins and I'm going to keep these two um, fins pretty much separated here I'm not going to draw it out as one large mesh I'm going to draw it out as two different meshes okay so we'll just go ahead and pull this up real quick okay so we'll go ahead and pull that out turn our image off here try and smooth this out a little bit here and I'm trying to make sure that these you know whenever I dynamesh these these come in sort of thick because whenever we Z remesh it it's just gonna make it easier and much more um, user-friendly to give us a, a solid sculpting mesh so, okay so we'll go ahead and turn our image back on here go ahead and mask out for our second fin real quick and I need to just make sure that I'm completely on the top of the model there okay so I think I should go ahead and maybe paint a little bit more of the mask there okay we'll go ahead and invert that mask and we'll go ahead here and pull this out as well and my Dynamesh is just being a little bit slow here today usually it's not you know so slow but today it's acting a little bit strange so go ahead and just make sure that we have at least a little bit of separation there and I'm gonna have to fatten that fin up here just a little bit not too much we can go ahead and take care of that whenever we're sculpting the model for sure okay so let's go ahead here and um, go ahead and do the back one here and I'm just trying to give us at least a decent cartoony base so we can probably take some of that off there okay go ahead and invert our mask grab our move topological brush so you can see where we're you know basically just using the same method here over and over and over again to pull out all these fins and make sure that we have the right shape or the shape that we would you know at least be happy with because we can always you know also edit this once we retopologize our mesh as well let's go ahead here and pull out the side fin so go ahead and mask mask the area um, just in front of the fin go ahead and invert that and we'll go ahead here and pull this out as well okay and we'll just go ahead and shape it here and I just need to make sure that I bring that size up a little bit for our brush okay go ahead and try and smooth that out and we will go ahead and redynamesh now okay so this is looking okay we just need to at least manipulate this a little bit more and we'll definitely have to go ahead and fatten this up a little bit so that we uh, will make sure that we get a good re topology whenever it comes time to go ahead and do that okay and let's go ahead and pull out our bottom fence here as well 
so we just need to bring that image back and definitely want to go ahead and before I do that edit this side fin just a little bit and you can take all the time you want to go ahead and do this um, let's go ahead and paint a little bit of a mask there for our side fin or our bottom side fin here Okay, just using our move topological, we'll go ahead and pull this out. And we'll try and get this into the shape that we want here. Okay, so there you can see where we have that mesh created. Let's go ahead and just try and pull those over to the side a little bit there. Okay. And you can see for the most part here, where we're... Um, somewhat matching the underlying concept but like I said these are going to be cartoons so we definitely have to um, try and get a, a feel for the the mesh shape that we want want it definitely has to have a little bit of attitude so it's not going to look a hundred percent as the same as um, what a real fish is going to look like and, and that's not our goal here our goal isn't to you know make the fish look a hundred percent real but we want to maintain at least some of the original shape we just definitely need to you know manipulate a little bit to really go ahead and get this into a shape that we would want here okay so we'll go ahead and remesh this real quick okay so at this point I think I'm ready to go ahead and save this so we'll go ahead and save our fish two here as we'll call this the grouper dyna okay just to make sure if we crash or anything we can uh, go ahead and go back to that original shape so we'll go ahead and turn our dyna mesh off here go into our Z remesher make sure we get a target polygon count here of at least a hundred so that it's gonna like I said encompass the whole model and do a um, full retopology I think that's going to take a little bit of extra time to go ahead and kick through, so I'm going to go ahead and pause right here. All right, so our dynamo or our Z remesh has gone through. Let's go ahead and take a look at our geometry here. This is definitely um, high in terms of the actual polygon count, and if we take a look at our polygon count here, you can see where it's uh, 900 and, or 93,000. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. It actually looked like it was 900 and that would have been heavy in terms of the geometric count so this will cut it in half and if we take a look here again our polygon count it's only 22,000 now okay so we'll go ahead and cut this in half one more time okay um, so at this level you can probably start sculpting um, but me personally, I just don't like to sculpt on this. I don't want to say this is high. Um, this would be more like medium res geometry. And I, I would prefer not to actually start sculpting on this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half again because it's, even though it's still only 5,400 and somewhat polygons, I just want to go ahead and cut it in half one more time. And you can see here where this base mesh is much lower, but it still, you know, at least maintains that um, geometric shape. And you can see that it's only 1,400 polygons. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead here and just for my own self here, I'm going to go ahead and throw this over to Maya real quick. Go ahead and just move my output window off the screen there. And I wish Autodesk would actually fix that so that. Um, the output window doesn't always come up every time you launch Maya. But what are you going to do? Okay, so you can see that this is um, right in the position that we would want. Um, so if you want to go ahead and move that, you can, or um, start editing geometry, you can, but we're not going to go ahead and do that since we're uh, mainly just inside of ZBrush. So I'll just go ahead and throw that back real quick. Okay, just turn our mask completely off here. And I'm going to go ahead and manipulate the shape at least a little bit more here. Um, just so that we can begin our sculpting process. And you can see, you know, we're using that original base mesh that we created. Creating 
extra fish or, or more than one fish, it makes it just that much easier because it's saving you so much more time in, instead of having to create a, a base mesh for every single fish. It's just much easier to use in a, um, or reuse a a base. So it's just much, it makes it much more easy and it's going to save you a lot of time, especially when you're working in a production environment because you don't want to be spending three and four different days on a um, basic sketch of a model. It's just much easier to, to save yourself time rather than give yourself a headache. So, okay, we'll just continue here to manipulate our shape a little bit. Okay. And I think at this point we're probably ready to jump up two subdivision levels here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and start sculpting in the next lesson, but I'm just doing this for right now to to make sure that I have um, a real base mesh that I'm going to be, you know, extremely happy with here. So let me go ahead and turn off our polyframe. Go ahead and turn off our image here. And I want to go ahead and maybe manipulate those side fins at least a little bit here because I don't want it to be so like shouldery. I want it to be a little more um, aerodynamic since he is a fish. So we'll just continue to manipulate there. Make sure I turned down my smooth at least a little bit there. Okay. So we'll go ahead here and maybe thin these out a little bit. Thin this back one out little bit for sure. And if you Google a grouper, you're going to see where um, the grouper body is really wild in terms of, you know, what's going on with his body. Uh, they're definitely a big fish. But, you know, sometimes you just need to do a little bit of research through Google as well to really see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just smooth that out a little bit. Definitely need to thin this under fin out a little bit. This is definitely way too fat. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just thin that out there. And we can really take care of this a little bit more once we uh, start sculpting the body in earnest. So I think that's looking good for for the moment. But like I say, you, you know, you just definitely want to make sure that you have a really solid foundation for, you know, any any model that you build. So just make sure that you take into consideration that. So okay, let's go ahead here and save our mesh here as our base. So we'll call this the grouper base body. And in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and come back and begin the process of sculpting our grouper. So come on back.